In contrast to the idyllic images of the South Sea, this correctional facility houses the island's criminals. One of the toughest, Kazuma Talag, tries to muster some interest in his companions. He will be our guide to life on the inside. The one small pleasure left for the men is basketball. It offers a welcome distraction from the foul, lingering smells within. Kazuma was sentenced to 25 years for drug trafficking. This is one of the dark rooms. We're brought here when we don't obey the rules. No light, no bed. You can only leave the room once a day to have a shower. It is quite hard. Despite the isolation of the dark room, some prisoners are deemed too dangerous. Often, drug abuse is to blame and handcuffs are the solution. The resident Minister of Justice is American Michael Rosenthal. He introduced a new program of restorative justice. I was sworn in on March 1st of 2001, so it's been almost three years that I've been minister. I am the only non-Palawan ever to serve in the capacity as a minister in the Republic. It's been a great honor, but it's also presented many challenges. Micronesia has growing concerns about the rising crime rate. Drug trafficking, car theft and fraud were all but unknown here a few decades ago. When I first became Minister of Justice, there were about 70 prisoners and now there are well over 100. We reached the capacity at 121 altogether. So we were required to find additional space to house the prisoners. The women's section, a small wing of the building, needs much less space. There's only one jail for the whole of the country, and these five prisoners knew each other before they were in prison. Even within the prison, one drug is permitted, a local delicacy, betel nuts. Everybody, prisoners and guards, chew on it. <laughs> it is no problem possessing betel nuts in here. We are allowed to have them. You take a leaf, you put some lime over the nut, then you add some tobacco, and finally you chew everything. This is quite relaxing. Workshops relieve boredom and teach new skills. This is where we work. The experienced workers show the new ones how to cut properly. The prisoners carve traditional storyboards out of tropical wood, a skill first introduced during Japanese occupation. They have become a standard means of recording local myth and legend. For a long time, they were the only way of recording history in a land without writing. I don't know what he is doing, but it definitely won't become a storyboard. Well, each to their own. It's a strange twist of fate that today it is the prisoners who keep ancient cultures alive. We've worked very hard at the Division of Corrections at fulfilling our obligations not only to ensure that prisoners stay in their cells as is generally understood as the job of corrections, but also to rehabilitate them so that they can lead productive lives after they leave the Division of Corrections. The prisoners are also given the chance to improve their education, learning how to read and write. What is going on in the life of this person at this time? I was raised to say yes, sir, and I always respect authority. So, so army, I, I got along very well. Some train their brains, while others prefer to train their bodies. Achieving beefcake proportions may not help them in finding a job in later life. But in prison, pumping iron is welcome relief from the boredom. 
and in this tightly closed community, physical strength plays an important role in the hierarchy. In this prison, you can't do anything else. That's why we train. In case of trouble, it is quite helpful not to look like a weakling. Nothing is forced on them. And for the men who don't want to train or learn, they have little else to do but hang out during the day. But nighttime brings the same for everyone. Every evening at six o'clock, the guards close the cells until six o'clock in the morning, every day. These men can only dream of the majesty that lies beyond their walls, the paradise of the South Seas, just outside.